in all situations, I found out that the Lord Jesus Christ is a very present help in trouble. Not the time of trouble, because we're always in trouble, baby. As <laughs> soon as we wake up and you're living in this world, uh, I do believe we're in trouble. But no, no wonder God gives us new mercies every morning. But he is a very present help in trouble, not the time of trouble. No. <laughs> yes, Lord God, Bosha. The Bible says something very interesting. Let me read Psalms 91 and verse 1 real quick because somebody ain't going to believe it. So the Bible says something very interesting in the book of Psalms. We're going to start off there. Of course, we're going to read into you uh, some more uh, chapters in the book um, Defeating the Sexual Demon in the Church. Uh, you thought I was done, did you? No, we're still fighting that demon, baby. We're still, we're still battling. We're still fighting. Somebody had lost the battle this morning, didn't you? Somebody lost a battle last night, didn't you? Somebody lost a battle in your mind, didn't you? So right now in the name of Jesus, that's why we keep fighting him every day. Because he keeps coming at us. Hallelujah. But the, you're, you're, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to come to him harder. The Bible says in Psalms 91 and verse 1, listen, whenever you get in trouble, which is every day, whenever you find yourself involved in a sexual fight with a sexual demon, whenever you uh, find yourself involved in some things that you just can't handle, you need to dial 911. But I'm not talking about the police. No, Lord, no, Lord, no, Lord. But I'm talking about Psalms 91 and verse 1. It says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Lord have mercy. Um, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. And thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Nor by the arrow that flieth by day. Lord have mercy. Nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness. The pestilence has to do with uh, certain diseases. We ain't afraid of the COVID. We ain't afraid of the monkeypox and all that stuff they got going on. We're going to hide. We're going to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We're going to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. We're going to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. My Bible says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh to thee. Meaning people are falling out. They're giving up. They're getting laid off. Things are going on in their life. Different things are happening. But right now in the name of Jesus, just because it happened to Becky Sue or uh, 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 Celine over here doesn't mean, baby, it's going to happen to you. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come down to thee because you have decided that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And this is going to happen to you. Let me read something else. Because only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Lord have mercy. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, the most high, thy habitation, thy dwelling place. There shall no evil befall thee, not shall any plague come not thy dwelling. That's what I'm talking about. The plague, the COVID, the monkeypox. You may have had it. You may have gotten something going on. But right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I do believe that you're just still here. You're still praising. You're still fighting. You're still giving God the glory. You're still lifting him up in spirit and in truth. And listen, and it can't hurt you. It can't harm you. It's not going to take you out unless God says so. So watch this. What else is getting ready to happen right here? It says this. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt not tread upon the lion. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. Lord have mercy. Thou shalt tread upon the lion. Lord have mercy. Woo! Woo! Rabba sharababa. Do you know how much power you got? You know how much Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the serpent in the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Do you know how powerful you are? You just like David when David said, "Well, I it was a lion and a bear, and the sh came in a sheepfold. Your servant went out against the lion and the bear. He smote the lion and bear with his bare hands." Right now, in the name of Jesus, the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. God has given us certain spiritual gifts to war with and in. Don't you understand and realize in the name of Jesus, glory to God, that a lion should come out against you, a serpent should come against you, different spirits should come against you, a dragon should come against you. 
in Jesus name but thou shalt trample under the feet because he has set his love upon thee did you know God has set his love upon you he loves you that much you ought to tell somebody I'm loved by God God is not angry with you God is in love with you you thought God uh, has abandoned you but God is right there with you hallelujah he's been there and he has set his love upon you therefore will I deliver him I will set him on high because he hath known my name that's what you've done but he shall call upon me and I will answer him I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation you ought to give God a hand praise right now for all the things and that's Psalms 91 and 1 whenever you find yourself in trouble whenever you find yourself getting ready to slip whenever you find yourself in a battle with a sexual demon that's in the church call them Psalms 91 and verse 1 I, don't, I was with you uh, some time ago took a little vacation to Chicago to celebrate some birthdays our birthdays and I'm um, still celebrating yeah I wish I wish no, I ain't wanted to end baby I'm telling you you know, Leo's not to act. Well, when we get a birthday, we celebrate all month on you. We don't care. Your birthday could be August 2nd or August 3rd, and we're going to celebrate that whole month. You know, and we don't care. As soon as August hit, uh, Leo's like, it's my birthday. Well, wait a minute. It's not even to the 20th. I don't care. It's my birthday. And that's how Leo's is. It's not just going to go down. But we've been away for you quite some time. Hallelujah. But, but now, we have decided to go back in to wrestle with the sexual demon that's in the church because the sexual demon comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He comes to destroy your gifts, your ministry. He comes to distract you off with God and prophesying what God has put in your heart and your mind. He comes to distract you. He comes to get you off the mark. He comes to, listen, this is a high calling of God. It's a holy calling. It's a heavenly calling. You have a high calling, a holy calling, and a heavenly calling. In the bush. So right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, and that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He comes to try to take those things from you. And right now, we're battling him. We're battling him. Some of you right now, you may have lost some wars with him. Some of you may have lost some battles with him. Some of you thought it was over. Some of you might have thrown in the white the right flag and said, I give up. Some of you right now I just had decided that this is, this is just no use. He's always going to get me with this, in this area. But I say not so. I prophesy to you right now that you shall defeat the sexual demon that's been tormenting your life from since the day you was born. Now that's deep. Let me show you something. Let me read you something in this book right here. In the name of Jesus. Bear with me for a minute. This is chapter two. The lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. In this chapter, I want to deal with three weapons the enemy uses to get you involved in sexual sin. According to 1 John chapter 2 and verse 16, it says, The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are these weapons. If this passage let us know that these weapons are in the world and continue to fight against the people of God. Now, there are many meanings to the word lust. One meaning is when someone sets their heart upon something and longs for it. To covet, to crave, or desire something or someone, this is lust. The devil then uses your eyes to get your attention so he can sell you sexual sin. What the eyes see, the flesh wants. So when you see a fine man walking by, immediately you begin to covet him. That is why it is important to keep your eyes off the world and keep them focused on your goals. Advertising companies know that lust of the eyes exists in the world. That is why they use sex or have just women to sell their products on commercials. Stay with me now. The enemy is trying to make you, you make eye contact with you through the porn industry. Pornography has made eye contact with many men and women of God and the world. That is why it is a billion dollar business. When you look at porn and see every single sex act, you begin to want to perform like a porn star. Now you do not want a marriage anymore. You want a fantasy that does not involve a real relationship or commitment. Many in the church are hooked on pornography because the enemy has hypnotized you and us and me with the lust of the eyes. Can we be transparent? It is a fight and a struggle to get rid of this spirit because it leaves you with images in your head that will take years to vanish away. You will get flashbacks while you're at work. 
at home in the pulpit or while you're having sex with your wife. Pornography is a distraction. And eye contact is how the devil brings this distraction into your mind. Do not let the enemy in your eye gate. That is why he is doing, does what he is doing when you go to the strip club or when you watch sexual images on the computer screen. That is the enemy's way of making eye contact with you. Another example is an innocent sounding as a sexual joke or text message from a friend, which is another way the devil is bringing in the lust of the eyes into your life. Past lovers in your phone, you should have erased a long time ago. There's another way the enemy makes eye contact with you. Staring at a number of a person you have had sexual relations with can ultimately stir up old feelings and the next thing you know, you are making a call. The enemy has been trying to get your attention by using your eyes. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Take a look at Hebrews 12 and 2. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. The Lord suffered the cross because his eyes were on the joy and not the pain of the cross. When you decide to stop having sex, it is like pain to the flesh. But but keep your spirit on the joy that is set before you. Oh my God. Labo <laughs> Sharaba. It will hurt to see other Christians and people of the world sleeping with this person and that person. But keep your eyes off them and put it on the joy. Let's look at joy for a minute in Nehemiah chapter 8 and around verse 10. Then he said unto them, Go your way and eat the fat and drink the, the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Now to be sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy that you need to keep your eyes on while resisting sexual sin is the joy of the Lord. Because it is your strength. Sin will break your joy. And without joy, there is no defense against the enemy. And cause you to have no strength to fight. Now you find, my God, yourself having an all year stand instead of a one night stand. You come to church, everybody is shouting and dancing, but you're sad and feel uncomfortable and cannot praise God. That's why you must watch what you look at because what you watch can become your addiction. Notice what the book of Job said in verse 31, excuse me, chapter 31 and verse 1 says this. I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why then so I think upon a maid? Notice what Job is saying. What he will not allow his eyes, he will not allow his eyes to look upon anything that would cause him to stumble. No matter how dedicated Job was to God, Job knew he could still fall through eye contact. Even King David, on the night he sinned with Bathsheba, it all started through the eye contact. King David was watching her bathe naked, and what his eyes saw, his flesh wanted. How many times have we sinned because we are looking at something that we should not have? Watching pornographic materials like watching a spirit that can enter into your mind, body, and soul and will take years for it to depart. Oftentimes in the body of Christ, people try to rid themselves of sexual demonic spirit by getting married. You know anybody like that? Who thought that the remedy for their sexual addiction is to get married. Because they figured once they got married, they wouldn't get themselves involved in sexual sin. You know anybody like that? Well, maybe I'm talking to somebody else. Oh, my God. <laughs> Marriage is God's plan for man and, and a woman. However, it does not cure lust. The spirit of lust has to be cast out, not married out. When you rush and get married before God's time, get ready for a fall. Then sexual immorality will be just one of your problems. Divorce comes in and then poverty. Now you are having sex with anyone because of sorrow or the need to try and get back the years you lost in a bad marriage. The lust of the flesh is similar to the lust of the eyes. They work together. We must understand that the world system is for the world. Christians are not of this world. It is not our home. The problem is often that Christians look at the world and decided we just want to be just like them. 
That is what happened to Israel in 1 Samuel chapter 8. Israel decided they wanted a king over them, just like all the other nations in the world. <laughs> I believe that often times the church looks at the world and wants to be just like them in sexual activity. For example, when you see the guy who stays on the same block as you has different women and you decide you want to be like him. Or a ball player you look up to has a wife and a mistress and you think that is cool. There are swingers in your neighborhood and they have invited you and your wife over for a party. Rabo Shakaraba. Oh my God. This, this, this is just so real because I've seen it happen to so many couples that they think they can play with fire and not be burned. All these situations are called being transformed to the world. The opposite of conform is transform. Your mind has to be renewed and go into a metamorphosis. Like when a caterpillar turns into a butterfly or a tadpole turns into a frog. Change is good, but a metamorphosis is better. Anything that is transformed cannot be changed back. A man that goes through metamorphosis can never go back to his old ways again. Sexual sin is a killer. That is why we need more than a change, but a burning up of the flesh. I noticed something in the book of Acts chapter 19 and around verse 19. It says this. Many of them that use curious arts brought their books together and burnt them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. What the scripture was talking about was a group of men who had turned to the Lord from witchcraft. And they decided to burn the old, they decided to burn the old enchantment books and not hold on to the past. God cannot deliver you until you decide to burn the books. What, uh, what do you have of your ex you're still holding on to? Is it a phone number? Old letters? Or emails? Do you still have the man's boxers or jacket that you won't let go of? These things you hold on to only tempt you to go back. Did you know that the anointing can get in, on clothes and certain parts of clothing? In the book of Luke chapter 8, there was a woman with the issue of blood for 12 long years. But then she heard of Jesus and she heard if she and she said within herself, if I may just touch but the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Notice she did not want to touch him, but just his clothes. The anointing can get in clothing and the same goes with evil spirits. They can get into clothing as well. That explains why when you are wearing your ex's jeans right now, and yet you're wondering why you cannot get over him. When you are really ready for deliverance from sexual sin, just ask God to burn lust out of your mind and flesh. Let God burn images of sexual acts from the past out of your heart, for our God is a consuming fire. There is another distraction that prevents us from defeating sexual sin, and that is people. If we're going to defeat the enemy, then we're going to have to stop talking to him. We are holding on to people who are bringing us down to their level. Friends we have who are coming around us telling us about their sexual experiences. These so-called friends who know you are saved and trying to live for God and yet keep coming around you with pornographic pictures. The man you keep calling your friend knows you're trying to live for Christ, yet he still keeps trying to hook you up with his sister for sex. Come out from among them and be separate because who you hang around can influence you for the worse or the better. When you separate from some friends, it does not mean you don't love them. It just means that you love God more. If your hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter life main than having two hands that go into hell and to fire that shall never be quenched. <laughs> God is not literally telling you to cut off your hand, rather to cut off anybody who is causing you to stumble. What the scripture is saying is that it may be painful for you to get over some lovers, friends, maybe even family members, whoever, oh, that mercy, whoever is, is that causing you to fall into sexual sin, get rid of them. Separating from fraternity brothers can be hard, but God is with you. The girlfriends who keep talking to you about cheating on their husbands, avoid. And we are going to defeat the sexual demon. We have to stop talking to him. What friend do you know right now that's telling you to go to the bar knowing you are struggling with alcoholism? 
my brothers and sisters, why would you go to a strip club with friends knowing you are at the point of backsliding? Flee fornication, adultery, and lust. Stay out of the bars for the women you cannot resist. There are friends that you um, have had for years, and you have done everything together, including committing fornication with, but it's time to let them go. Oftentimes, people think they, uh, if they get rid of some friends, they will not be able to make new ones. Notice what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 19, around verse 29. It says, anyone that has forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. What the word of God is saying is, when you get rid of folks for God, he will add unto you more people in your life. When you leave a friend alone for God's sake, he will add a new friend to you. Family members who are in sexual sin, you stop hanging around them, God will add to you new mothers, daughters, and fathers. God is able, if you let him, to let go of your past. If you have a social network account, this is going to be heavy. This is what's going to be heavy. Wow. If you have a social network account, go through the friends list. Go through your friends list and get rid of uh, ex-lovers and people who have been flirting with you. The reason God wanted his people to separate from certain nations because he knew they would take their hearts away from him. Do not let people who are controlled by sexual immorality control you and take your mind off Christ. To crucify the flesh means to give up, give in to the lust of the flesh. To crucify the flesh means to not give in to the lust of the flesh. To deny your flesh takes power and patience. A daily fight is what you are in for. Never take the day off because when you do, the enemy comes in like a flood. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against him. There is no doubt the enemy will come one day flood, and flood your mind with past lovers, lust, flashbacks of things you have done in the past, the college years when you were away from home for the first time. That is what he will bring up. The nights you spent with a roommate that turned into more than just friends. The flood of past and present sin will come in, but God will lift up a standard against them that says no weapon that is formed against you shall be able to prosper. As you can see, the lust of the eyes and the flesh work together. The pride of life is a little different from those spirits. Pride says, I must sleep with as many women as possible before I get married. This spirit will always try to prove itself through sex. You are trying to prove to the guys that you are one of them by sleeping with as many women as possible. This is the pride of life. Hmm. The enemy will trick you into thinking you are a man only by how many women you slept with. There's a spirit, my friend, that will convince your mind that you still got it. So go ahead and get that woman's number. The pride of life will have you thinking you have to sleep with the boss to get ahead. Men will refuse to, to get married until they have traveled to Vegas to sin in other than Sin City. Some say they will not get married until they have joined the Mount High Club. The pride of life will always have you thinking you are missing out on something. That is why most men do not get married, but are always looking for the next bed mate. This is the pride of life. You are not missing out on anything in the world, but you could be missing out on a good husband or wife if you continue to let pride consume you. Proverbs 18.22 says, Whoso ever find if a wife find if a good thing and obtain favor of the Lord why let pride cause you to miss out on the good thing that God has prepared for you do not give up a good thing to back into the world for sexual sin the world will tell you more women than the better when the pride of life comes in what it does is contradict the word of God when you are married and the pride of life comes in you begin to say I am missing out on something being stuck in this marriage. Your husband may not be six feet tall and full of muscles, but he is your king and you are his queen. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 16 and 18, the pride of life is deception. It will have you thinking that sin is better than righteousness. Furthermore, preachers in the church have a, to be honest with the people of God. Many times we tell the people there is no pleasure in sin, but that is not true. There is pleasure in sin. However, it only lasts for a season. That is why 
when most Christians get saved by, they are surprised that the feelings of lust still exist in them. Let us be honest with the people of God and ourselves. Many people work out in gyms and stay fit, not for health, but for the chance to sleep with another man's wife. While the lust of the eyes and the flesh are simple, the pride of life is complicated. The spirit of pride will have you thinking you will be forever young. Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, or understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things, 1 Corinthians 13 11. The way to defeat the pride of life is, is to become a man. You are not worried about missing out on lust and women when you become a man. No longer do you seek the attention of other women when you are married, when you become a man. When women no longer try to date their daughter's high school boyfriend, when you become a woman. When you become of age, put away childish things that is the pride of life. You are missing, you're not missing out on anything, for there is nothing new under the sun. You have dated enough and have had enough sex, now it's time to grow up and live for God. Men love your wives. Ladies, love, ladies honor your husbands. Forget the handsome delivery guy who always first with you at the job. Stop fantasizing about the younger lady that first with you at the restaurant. Your pride of life will have you trying to be 20 when you're really in your 40s. When a new 20-year-old shows up at a job getting all the attention from the women, you get upset and start working out to prove that you're still the man. That is pride. You have been the center of attention at work for years until a young lady fresh out of college joins the work crew and now she has all the men's attention. Now you get upset and start thinking about breast implants. That is pride. That is the pride of life. Some people are trying to be a player when they are married. The pride of life causes you to be restless until you are not happy in any situation. You can have a wife, money, house, and car, yet still not enough. <laughs> Pride will have you constantly thinking about the woman you have slept with, but wish you did. Excuse me, let me say that again. Pride will have you constantly thinking about the women you never slept with, but wish you did. Let me say that one more time for all my Peters in the world. Pride will have you constantly, constantly thinking about the woman you never slept with, but wish you did. Do not destroy your life because of the pride of life. No sexual sin is worth your marriage your ministry, and your mind. There is pleasure in sin, but it's really only for a season. You have to be having fun with that woman's husband now. You may be having fun with that woman's husband now. Lord have mercy. Should I, should I preach this? Should I, should I say this? You may be having fun with that woman's husband now, but it's only for a season. That man's wife has been all over you, but it's only temporary. When the season is up, you may be broke, busted, left for dead, lost your mind, lost your home, even your church. God has called us to live without regret. That is what the pride of life does. It calls you to live in regret. A man or a woman begins to think, maybe I should have gone out more and sinned more. The devil is a lie. And I know there <laughs> is nothing in the world you're missing out on. However, there are some blessings you are missing out on if you continue to be distracted by sexual sin. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 says this The thing that has been It is what will shall be And that which is done Is that which shall be done And there is no new thing under the sun The scriptures letting you know that You have been there Done that And there is nothing new under the sun Stop waiting on the next man And, to, and get with the man of God ordained for you Stop waiting on the next man And get with the man God ordained for you Stop waiting on the next man And get with the man that God has ordained for you Love your wife, for there is nothing new under the sun. The enemy does not have any new tricks, but if you get with God, his mercy is new every morning. <clears throat> Friends, have you ever looked at people that live for the weekend and they say, I can't wait for Friday? And when that Friday comes, they go to the same clubs, sleep with the same type of men and women, and drink the same drinks? There is nothing new to what they are doing. But with God, he gets sweeter as the days go by. That is why John says it. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but when we see him, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Simply, the best is yet to come with God. But with the enemy, we have been there and done that, and there is nothing new. My brothers, no longer let pride consume you, but let God consume you. I would say act your age, but I'd rather say act like you're saved. God bless you and keep you. That was chapter 2 of this joint here. Defeating the sexual demon in the church. You get this bad boy on Barnes and Noble's online bookstore. 
God bless you and keep you. Listen, if it's a word, then I'm, I know it was heavy. If it's a word, then I must have did it. And if it's not, then I wasn't with it. Stay committed.